Today we will start looking at what is called two body problem. Okay, here you have um, two particles of masses m1 and m2 which are interacting with each other and there are no external forces present. Okay, so that's the situation. So you have a particle of mass m1, another particle of mass m2, okay, and let's say this guy is located at R1 and this particle is located at R2 with respect to some origin which let's say it's here which means this is R1 and this is R2. Okay and these two particles are interacting with each other and let's say the potential en energy due to that interaction is u of r1 r2 okay so the uh, interaction is given by the potential energy r1 r2 it's a function of r1 and r2 and there are no external forces on this system So this is what is a two body problem. So you have two particles, two bodies and uh, they are interacting in a uh, certain way. So here I have made an assumption that the potential energy only depends on where the particles are. Okay, that's the assumption I have made. But now I want to further assume, which is very reasonable, uh, further assumptions. Okay. So uh, I assume that the force is such that the potential energy does not change if you take the entire system and move it to somewhere else. Okay. Meaning it cares only about what is the difference between R2 and R1? Okay, so if I translate this entire thing by some amount, it the uh, potential energy does not change. So I am saying that U of R1, R2, okay, is same as U of R. Let's let me put the first one here in this does not matter so here what i'm saying is it cares only about the uh, vector which is separating them okay the the difference vector r2 minus r1 okay that's nice and this uh, of course is not uh, unreasonable this is a very reasonable assumption because that's how uh, most of the things will behave if for example you think of two particles which are interacting gravitationally if you take the entire system and shift it to another um, place millions of kilometer away or billions of kilometer away the potential energy between those two will not change okay now not only that we want to further assume that u of r1 r2 is only dependent on the distance between these two particles okay so this is clearly different from this here it still depended on the direction in which r2 minus r1 will point right so here let's say this is r2 this is r1 so this vector this is r2 minus r1 so when i write here this way it means that the potential energy cares about in which direction this uh, vector is pointing. So if you rotate this for example this entire setup then the R2 minus R1 will be pointing in some other direction and it, it says that okay it may depend on it 
and here I am going to be more specific and saying that even if you rotate this so that the direction of R2 minus R1 changes it still does not change if the separation distance is fixed okay that is what uh, is meant by this expression which is also not unreasonable this is a very reasonable choice because you know that space is homogeneous and isotropic so if I if my system is not being affected by any other external agents then space will be homogeneous and isotropic and translating as a whole the entire thing or even rotating the entire setup should not change how the system is going to behave which means that the potential energies should be given by um, such restricted form okay um, let's see mm, yeah now if this is the uh, case then we say that the force is central okay central force which means just that your potential energy depends only on the separation between the two particles of your system that's a central force field okay um, now let's ask I and mean, we would like to solve uh, this system and this system is solvable we will see that we'll be able to find the full solution to this but um, at the moment the goal is to figure out as much we can about the system without um, specifying anything about the potential other than what we have already said okay so I do not want to assume any special kind of special form for the potential that it falls off this way or that way and I want to see how much I can say about uh, such a system just based on the fact that this is a center force uh, system okay so one thing is clear that this is a six dimensional system this has a six degrees of freedom which is obvious each particle has three degrees of freedom so the system is is a system of six degrees of freedom and let me try to create a separation mm, yes um, okay okay fine so what's the Lagrangian of this system it's easy to write it's just the kinetic energy minus the potential energy and we have already written down the form of potential energy so your L the Lagrangian is half m1 r1 dot square plus half m2 r2 dot square minus the potential energy which is r2 minus r1 the modulus of it okay it cares only about the length now we ask whether these are the best coordinates to describe the system now our experience with um, several different systems before may immediately tell us that they, these are not the best coordinates it would be wise to use r2 minus r1 the modulus of it as one of the coordinates and the other coordinate which will be uh, good to use will be the center of mass coordinate okay um, uh, we have come across this thing several times so I will not go further into this and just write down the transformation okay so what we want to do is we want to do a transformation of coordinates of coordinates from 
R1 which is I will call X1, Y1 and Z1 and R2 which is X2, Y2 and Z2 and from this I want to go to R capital R by which I denote the center of mass M1 R1 plus M2 R2 over the total mass of this system which is M1 plus M2 and small r which is r2 minus r1 so i go from these six one two three four five six to these six because r is of three vectors so it has three components and small r is also three vector it has three components so i've gone from six to six and let's see why uh, this will be very useful but before we do that let's invert this and write down um R1 and R2 in terms of capital R and small r, okay? So please do this exercise uh, and V, E, R, T, correct. So please sh check that what I'm writing is correct. R1, you can write as the center of mass, um, location of the center of mass minus M2 over M1 plus M2 and this small vector r which is the separation vector and then your r2 is this plus m1 over m1 plus m2 times r okay that's nice and um, this will be very useful because when i try to find out what the kinetic energy is which is here this um, in this place and um, when I substitute these R1 and R2 in there I find a very uh, nice result which is kind of expected so please do the following exercise and check okay I had a plan of using green when I'm giving exercises okay so please check that the kinetic energy T becomes half M um, yeah sorry kinetic energy which is half M1 R1 dot square plus half M2 R2 dot square becomes half M1 plus M2 R dot square which is the uh, coordinate of the center of mass so the velocity of center of mass square plus half M1 M2 over m1 plus m2 r dot square okay let me check the dimensions so i have two powers of mass here one power of mass below so it's it makes one power which is consistent with this one so it looks fine okay good um, now let me define by capital m m1 plus m2 the total mass and i also introduce mu to be the following okay so that's the definition of mu and you can see that this piece here m1 m2 or m1 plus m2 is just mu okay and mu is called the reduced mass so with this what is our Lagrangian now our Lagrangian looks like the following So my Lagrangian is now half m r dot square then you have the reduced mass term which is half 
mu r dot square and then we had the potential term which is u of r okay where i have introduced new notation which is r2 minus r1 so this vector this r without any vector symbol is this quantity okay that is good and it's nice because you see the coordinate capital r the center of mass coordinate that is a cyclic coordinate which is what you expected okay this this is nice because now i can uh, immediately solve the equation of motion for capital r and i know what i will get i mean you can do it but what that's what you're going to get the equation of motion for r is r dot is equal to constant which just says that the center of mass moves with a constant velocity that is what is expected and then we can drop it from the lagrangian because the equations of motion of other coordinate r is not going to be affected by what is happening to capital r so i can take my lagrangian to be half mu r dot square minus u of r okay now you see this is very nice because this looks like i mean not like it is exactly of the same form as of a particle of mass mu which is moving in a potential field which is given by u of r okay central potential field so this lagrangian is same as the lagrangian of as the lagrangian of a particle of mass mu mass mu moving in a force field u of r so you understand what is happening you started with a system which had two particles but with a good choice of coordinates the system appears to be equivalent to another system which is a very simple system where you have a particle of mass mu which is moving in a uh, center force field which is given by u of r okay that is what it looks like so if you can solve this system the this new one to which we have reduced the, our original system if we can solve it i can invert back so let's say i solve for small r and i have capital r from that i can construct my r1 and r2 and i will know about my original problem right so that is what um, will provide us the uh, full solution to this problem okay so we will now um, proceed from here and ask whether i can further make a better choice of coordinates okay i went from r1 and r2 to capital r and small r which was center of mass and the separation between the two particles which immediately gave me a cyclic coordinate and i could get rid of that coordinate from my from my lagrangian i would like to ask whether there is still something i can do about the the coordinates can i choose a a nice coordinate and and you can see why i might be thinking about this because you have here only the um the 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 magnitude of that vector r okay so i can um i can do more so i will this is what we will look at next